Hello people. So if you have been using Python for a while, obviously you would have started by learning about variables. So you can just go a is equal to 10, b is equal to sky or whatever it is. And of course, then you can use these. But sooner or later, you run into a situation where you want to have a bunch of variables, right? So you could have the values of a lot of um, selling items on your on your site or something that you're trying to analyze. So you could go A is equal to 10, B is equal to 11, C is equal to 12. But clearly, this is not a very efficient way of doing this because what if you want to do something with all of these together? What if you want to multiply all of them by two or by some other number? Uh, you would have to sort of write statement for each variable separately, right? So that's where you want a variable that can deal with lists of things. And in Python, you have a couple of options to do that. There is a built-in list uh, available within Python and then you can also use something called NumPy arrays. And in this video, we're just gonna look at both of them and see some of the pros and cons of using each. So lists are built into Python, so they're very easy to use. You just go A is equal to, but instead of having a value, you use square brackets, and then you have as many values as you like inside that array. And that's as simple as that. Now you have yourself a list. If you print it out, uh, it'll print out as a list. Uh, you can see that right here. If you print out the type of this thing, you will see that it will be called um, a list, as, as you would expect. So you have them in a list, but then what can you do with them, right? Uh, one of the things that you will want to do is to access their elements one by one, right? So if you want to access the first element, for example, you will go, uh, let's just print it out, actually. You will go print a zero because it's just the substring starts at zero, the numbering starts at zero. So a zero will in fact be equal to the value one. Print it out and it shows one. A two will be actually three because it'll be zero, one and two like that and print it out, it's three and so on and so forth. So that's all very well. But you know, this is no different from using individual variables. What we really wanna do is to do something with all of them sort of in one go. Uh, for example, if you want to add two to each of them and, and do something with that. Well, that's where the for in construct comes in, right? So you can say for v in a colon and print v. I'll tell you in a second what's going on here, but just run it first. And you see that all of the values are listed out, but unlike before, they're not listed out as an array. They are listed out as individual values. One, two, three, four. They're all sort of separated from each other. What's happening here, of course, is a is our uh, list, and this for is saying, look, for each value of the list A, pretend that the name of that particular value is V, and then within the uh, loop, you can do anything with that value. So what it'll do is it'll take first the first element, put it into V, then the second element of A, put it into V, then the third element into V, and so on and so forth. And then within this, you can do whatever you want with them. Now, I'm just printing them out, but of course, you can also do mathematics with it. So you can say print V into two, and then if I run it like that, then you get a different array, right? So with one simple construct, you can do a calculation on all the elements of a list. Now you can see that if you had individual variables trying to do this, that would not have been a very efficient way to do it. But this is much, much easier, right? By the way, the V is not a magical value. This is just uh, any old variable that you can use. You can use X, Y, Z for all. Uh, whatever you use here, just use the same thing down here as well. And that will work exactly the same. Right, so that works the same. Let's just clear this up. Okay, so that's a basic functionality of that. But now that you have them, you can do some other interesting things with it as well. For example, you can sort it. Now, right now the list is already sorted. So let me just add some, um, change some of the numbers so they are, they are un unsorted. Um, and right now, if I just uh, print it, I just print the whole thing, you get, as you would expect, in the same order in which you entered them, right? But what if I do a dot sort first? and then print it. Well, then you get a sorted um, list, of, uh, list of items. So this is pretty convenient, right? So, so with one simple command, you can just sort all these elements within it. And there are other functions available as well. If you want to add them up, for example, you can use the aggregate sum function. Um, sum a, call it b is equal to sum a, and then if I print b, that's the sum of all the values within my array. Right, so you can do some pretty interesting things with it. One more thing about lists is, that you can actually have different kind of elements within this. So this is all numbers, but if I right now just add one more string to it in the middle and just call it one and uh, print it like that, then it will be quite happy to print it out as it is, right? So you get the 11, the 22, the 311. Notice that the one is uh, surrounded by these uh, quote marks, but the numbers are not, which means that this is a string, but the others are still being treated as numbers, which is exactly what you want. 
So that's pretty handy. You can store different types of values uh, within it. So this is as far as lists are concerned. Uh, but what if I wanted to do something uh, with each of the element, which is a bit more complicated? For example, if I wanted to multiply each element with two and then store it back into the original array, right? You could do that still with the, the for construct, the for in construct that we just used. You can also use some map functions, but maybe we'll cover them in a separate video. But if you really want to do a lot of maths element by element with each element of a certain list, then you're better off using NumPy arrays. So NumPy is not built into Python itself. It comes from a library called NumPy. And the first thing you have to do if you don't already have it installed is to install it using the pip3 install method. Now, if I try to do pip3 install NumPy, I get the uh, requirement already satisfied uh, thing because you only have to do it once and I've already done it. But if you haven't done it before, then you will need to run this command and it will install it for you. Once you have it though, all you need to do is to import NumPy, give it an alias as NP, which is what is traditionally used with NumPy. And now instead of having an array of this type, we can now define it in a slightly different way as I'll just show you. We'll still call it A, but this time instead of just having square brackets, we'll go NP dot array dot array. An array is a function, so you will need parentheses first, and then within the parentheses, you will define it like you were doing before. One, two, three, four, and five. Well, three, four, five, or whatever. And uh, now you have a NumPy array. And if I print it out, it'll print out looking pretty much similar to what we did in the case of lists. And so far, you know, it doesn't seem to be much point in using NumPy arrays, but just hold on for a second. If I print out the type, by the way, just for uh, completion, let's just try this as well and you, you get the NumPy ND array, which is the full name, of course, at the ND array. So it's not a list anymore, it's an array. So that's all very well, but what's so special about these arrays? Well, one of the things is uh, the use case that we just talked about. What if we want to multiply each element by two? So let's just do that. In this case, all I have to do is A is equal to A into two. And if I then print A, you will notice something very interesting. Uh, right, so now you're getting two, four, six, eight, ten which is each element multiplied by two. So just by using this single statement, it's the natural way to write it. And what it has done is it has multiplied this two element by element with each of the elements of this array. So that's pretty handy. And this is something that you cannot do with lists, for example. And that's one of the reasons to use uh, NumPy arrays. Also, uh, if I have, by the way, this is just one of the functions. I mean, I could do uh, divide by it. I could do, um, you know, I can also use some built-in NPy functions. So I can go NPy dot, um, square of a and then everything will be squared there you go five square is 25 four square is 16 three square is nine and so you get the idea you can also do some uh, trigonometry so you can go like uh, sin sine and then it'll take the sine of each element and store that back in um, so many many things can be done you can take square root as well so a lot of these are available skew rt and this gives us the square root and of course, you're not limited by these. You can sort of uh, do your own as well. So if you want to do a cube, A into A into uh, into A will give you, as you would expect, uh, a cube of each element, right? So one cube is one, two cube is eight, three cube is 27, and, and you're getting the results right down here. Let's just clear it up one more time. There you go. Okay, so, so that's pretty handy, but it doesn't, it doesn't stop there. Uh, you have one array. Let's now create another one, call it B. And this time I'm going to put in other values. Let's just say 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And if I want to multiply each element of A by each element of B, then how do you think we'll do it? Well, just do it the natural way. We'll call it C this time. So C is equal to A into B. And then we print out the value of C. And um, as you would expect, now we're getting 10, 40, 90, 160, and 250. So you, you see what's going on here, right? So one into 10 is equal to 10, two into 20, second element multiplied by second element is 40, third element three multiplied by third element, this one 30 is equal to 90 and so on and so forth. So again, it's a very, very simple construct. You don't have to do any loops or any maps or any fancy stuff. You just use simple mathematical notation and you can multiply them together. So this is just a flavor of the kind of things that you can do with NPy arrays. Now, there is one more thing you should know about NPy arrays, and we'll just delete the second one for now, is that they expect each of these elements to be of the same type. In lists, we saw you could mix up strings and uh, integers, and that was working just fine. Uh, with NumPy arrays, it expects all of them to be of the same type. Now, if I do insert a string in there, so I call it one, 
and uh, it will not complain but it'll do something interesting and i'll just show you in a minute right so let me just do this and if i run it now it still prints them out but notice that now all of my values have these little quotes marks around them right because it's treating all of them as strings and the reason it's doing that is because by definition the npy array must have all elements of the same type so if it finds one more than one type inside it it tries to by itself come up with a type which can accommodate all of them now it cannot put uh, a string in a number right so there's no representation of o and e which is a number but it can put these numbers as strings so that's what it has done it has selected the data type and it has then applied the widest data type and it applied it to all the elements now obviously it's a mixed array like this is now basically a string array and you can't do maths with it anymore at least not the way you would expect it so i go a is equal to a into two and then try to print that and you know you will get an error because uh, because of this uh, this this thing because it's a string array and you can't really do that if i get rid of this um, then it'll work just fine again so this seems like a limitation because we saw in lists that you could actually mix and match strings and numbers in the same array and here we are in npy array which is supposed to be better and you can't do that well it is a bit of a limitation but first of all in most use cases you will actually want to have a, a homogeneous type of a thing if you want to mix and match then there are other data structures available but the, re the reason it's really done is because by having them all in the same way storage becomes more efficient it uses less memory or less storage to actually store these lists and operations on these become faster because it knows upfront what type of uh, elements it's dealing with it doesn't have to go element by element and, and try to figure out what that element is first and then do an operation on it it'll just know to begin with that all the elements are of a certain type and it will store them efficiently in memory. It will take up less memory space, and it will also be faster to work with. And that's why NPI arrays are used. Also, if you use other uh, machine learning libraries like uh, Scikit or other li libraries, then all of them use NumPy array as a starting point. So it's very important to be familiar with that. Again, you can sort the uh, arrays as well, just like you did for lists and so on. I will not. Uh, you can read up on the course uh, in the reference guides now that you have a basic sense of them. One interesting thing about NPy arrays is what if you want to use multi-dimensional arrays, right? So you, if you, for example, have not just a simple list, but a list of lists, as it were. So let me just show you what I mean first. So you have so far the simple construct. You have the parentheses. You have the square bracket. But inside each element itself will be uh, an, an, an array. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and um, seven, eight, nine, right? Now, if I print this like this, you will notice that it goes one, two, three, four, five. It looks like three rows and three columns, which is exactly what we had given it, three rows and three columns. In fact, we can also print the shape of this thing. So we can say print A, but also print the shape of A. So print, so it knows it is aware of the uh, shape of this thing. And if I run it like this, uh, sorry, it's a little problem. A dot shape, it's a property, not a function. So if I run it like this, yeah, there you go. So it has three rows and three columns. And so in the end, it shows me three by three. And just to demonstrate how this works, if I now go seven, eight, nine, and then I go 10, 11, 12, and I run it like that, uh, now it says four, three, because there are one, two, three, four rows and still three columns, right? So this becomes useful if you're gonna do a lot of machine learning type of things because this is basically a matrix in mathematics and you will use, uh, use a lot of matrices in certain fields such as uh, you know machine learning and so on. So this is quite handy. But one last trick that, that you can use with shapes is that you can actually reshape these arrays as well. So right now we have a four by three array, but what I can also do is A is equal to A dot reshape and then I can give it a shape and I can give it uh, let's say six comma two and if i run it now something interesting will happen now you notice that it's the same numbers but they are now arranged as six rows and two columns right so one two three four and it, and if you look at the shape now it is six by two um you know so so you can have any shape as long as all the elements would fit into that shape right so you've got 12 elements to work with so six into two is 12 so that works if i were to do six into three for example then it'll complain as it should because you know it cannot reshape array of size 12 into shape six by three because six by three is 18 but six by two works just fine and uh, you can also go even six by one and this will give you uh, sorry six by 12 by one <laughs> not six by one because 12 into one would be 12 and this will give you basically uh, 12 rows and one column and if you go one comma 12 which is the reverse of it you will get something slightly different you now get 
uh, one row and 12 columns and that's the shape over there so you can do these shapes and uh, that's numpy arrays for you so again in a summary you can use both uh, lists and numpy arrays for different functions if you want to store elements of different types perhaps you're better off with a list if you have small um, amount of data then lists are okay but if you have large amounts of data like thousands and thousands of numbers or, or even millions and if you want to do a lot of mathematics and if you want to do a lot of element wise mathematics and matrix ma mathematics on it if you want to use it for machine learning and so on then you're better off using numpy arrays and that was a short introduction to lists and numpy arrays thank you for watching